Thanks for joining us for this video. We wanted to make a first cut with our Granberg Alaskan Chainsaw Mill video. Kind of share with you our initial experience, kind of some feedback and thoughts on the mill, setting it up, making the first cut, that type of thing. Um, we'll put a link in the description below. We did a how to assemble your Granberg Mill video. And a few of our uh, viewers recommended that we switch our handle around to make this a right-handed mill. So we actually went ahead and did that, worked pretty good. So thank you for that suggestion. Um, so if you're following the instructions perfectly, you're probably gonna end up with a left-handed mill, just so you know. Uh, so what we've done, we've gone ahead and put the uh, mill together. We're running a 36 inch bar. This is a 36 inch MK775 Granberg Alaskan Chainsaw Mill. And the saw that we're running is a still MS660. It's a pretty large saw well suited for this type of work. And we're actually going to be taking the Granberg uh, ripping chain for a test drive also. And we're gonna try to do later, we'll do a comparison video between that and cross cut chain that's been filed to be ripping chain. So let's uh, get started. We'll set the saw up, we'll set up our guide, do all that stuff, and then we'll do our first cut and we'll give you our thoughts. First cut is complete, and this of course was a top cut. We set this up with just a couple of surveyor stakes, and we set it up so that the first slab is actually two inches thick, and that way we can actually harvest hopefully a two by four or some other, maybe a live edge piece of lumber out of this top slab. We're using a ladder that we built and it's kind of custom, I won't go into detail on that, maybe another video, but basically the ladder is sitting on these guides, it's not sitting on the log, and we used a typical level to make sure that these guides are square on both ends, that gives us a nice straight cut, the most critical cut for your chainsaw mill. So that's how we have everything set up. First cut is done. I will say that setting the saw up for the first time on this cut was a little challenging for us, because typically what we do is we measure the log, set our guide, place the ladder on top, set the saw on top of the ladder, and then we manually adjust the saw to be just below the guide. Well, that was a little difficult because our saw is pretty heavy, and the, uh, the chainsaw mill wanted to bind a lot trying to adjust it up and down. It'd be a lot easier if you knew exactly the measurement, which we could have done. We may do that in the future between here and here and just set your saw up with that measurement, then you're good to go. Um, we tried to set it up sitting on the guide, it's very difficult, very heavy. So we might do that different in the future. As far as the chainsaw mill goes, very sturdy. I did have to tighten one nut while we were running, which wasn't a big deal. The uh, bar wrench fits right in the handle, so that was really easy to do. Um, everything's very rigid, so that was really good. Uh, the, the DIY mill that we were using, it just not as, not as sturdy. And so the weight of the saw and all that stuff really makes it kind of awkward to operate, especially on the first cut, which gets you all boogered up. And then you're kind of in a wreck for the rest of the log. So I feel like it did very, very well. The width of the mill was really nice. It's very stable. So I didn't feel like I was fighting the saw, pushing me around. Even with the heavy power head of the MS660, it didn't feel like the, the mill was wanting to always fall off or anything really weird like that. Um, the other thing, uh, the ripping chain did very, very well. I felt it, it just cut right through the log very easily. Granted, it's a brand new chain and it's super sharp, so those are two important things, but it didn't, it definitely didn't require the same amount of effort, I feel, that the cross-cut chain uh, filed at 10 degrees for ripping chain required. Just different. 
and uh, it definitely produces a very different sawdust. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that, but it's it's very fine. It's almost like dust, whereas normal crosscut chain produces more like chips. It's a little bit bulkier. Um, so that's just first impressions on the crosscut or the uh, the ripping chain from Granberg. It went through very easily. So uh, initial impressions on the chainsaw mill are very good. A little difficult to get us, you know, put together, but once everything's bolted down and, and square, it's very solid. And uh, definitely look forward to it. So let's take this uh, first cut off and see how clean we did on our initial slab. All right, so this is our top slab, and I feel that the cut is is moderately clean. I definitely wouldn't say it's like finish quality, but compared to our DIY mill, I'll just say this is much cleaner. Um, there's still a few um, kind of gouging areas where you're pivoting the saw kind of like this, trying to get going, and um, so that's kind of understandable with this type of setup. You're never gonna get just a perfect cut. Well, not never, but it's definitely challenging. Um, but I'll definitely say that it's much, much better than our DIY setup. Uh, you know, there's a few surface imperfections, and I guess if you didn't want rough lumber, you could plane it or just do something else. But other than that, I feel like the finish is, is very good. I'm sure that we'll get better with the sawmill, um, so you know we'll improve on it. Um, other than that, this, this top cut, which is the most critical cut, I do feel is clean enough that we're gonna get some really nice slabs out of this. Our other mill would tend to kind of dig and and kind of buckle and come up and down and you end up with a kind of a rough surface and it made it really difficult as you worked through the slabs to keep it nice and flat. So uh, that was one flaw of that setup and the Granberg being so rigid does a great job of just making a nice clean cut. All right, so we're actually milling lumber for our hot tub deck. So we're gonna go ahead and get set up and start cutting uh, slabs out. Let's do it. We are almost done with our first log section. We've milled six planks so far. We got one more to go. And uh, so initial impressions with the Granberg. I'm definitely impressed. I would say there's no such thing as a perfect mill. So I want to be careful disclosing that this is not the end all be all of mills. Okay, it's a chainsaw mill. You need to understand that. So uh, it's very precise. When you get everything set, it's good and you can mill like crazy, but you need to take time getting it adjusted. Do not trust the guides on the end. It'll get you close, but don't just set it to two and set it to two and go to work, okay? You're gonna end up with wood that's shaped like this or like this. So take your time with a tape measure, measure toward the bar and your end rails, and make sure that your measurements match. They need to match. And then also, measure the distance between the on off bar and your tooth on the chain not the bar the tooth that's going to make, make just a snivel of a difference in order to get really precise measurements so once we set those measurements we have been very consistent over six slabs it's absolutely square on the sides and it's the exact thickness that we need the on off bar i like it i didn't understand exactly what it was at first and i know some of our followers asked the same question what is it it helps you get started and end the cut very level. Without that, the log will just fall through this cavity right here. So this guide helps you get onto the log and get off the log while maintaining a nice square cut. Like it. Um, once we got the handle set correctly, it took a little bit of adjusting this way to get comfortable. We had it a little too narrow at first, and that makes it hard to use. We moved the on-off bar out toward uh, the middle, and it's much more stable that way. Um, so if you're kind of getting some wonky cuts or you feel like the power head's leaning too much, try adjusting your on-off bar. 
One of the things I wanted to mention that uh, that's really critical and I'm liking about the Granberg is, is the precision. I kind of touched on that a minute ago. But the reason that's important, when you're cutting lumber, it's not, not so critical uh, because the distance between the guide and the bar is very, very narrow. So it's not gonna be kind of wobbly. But as you open up the gap between the saw and the guide, the tendency of the whole system to kind of rack is gonna be worse. And our DIY mill was extremely bad that way. At about two inches, that was absolute maximum for rigidity. If you got beyond that, I don't think you'd get a clean enough cut to use for hardly anything. You'd have to plane the wood. Uh, I can tell by the engineering and the materials and the construction of this particular mill, when you open this thing up big enough to cut beams, you're gonna have the precision you need to cut clean and not have to do a lot of finish work. Um, so I think that's one of the ways that the Grandberg really shines is when you open this up to cut large sections of wood, which we're going to do to timber frame, we're going to want to make sure that that's nice and clean on the bottom. If we make a, a boogery mess of these beams, we're going to make a lot of work for ourselves. So we're really excited to have that, that precision fa uh, factor with the Grandberg. Another thing that I really like is these guides uh, on the power head side. One of the huge improvements over our DIY mill is that guide. It really allows you just to let the power head crawl its way through the log. Our DIY mill doesn't work that way. It's very fatiguing. This one, you can just pretty much, unless you got massive knots sticking out the side, the guide will work its way along the edge of the log as it goes. You gotta try to get as much of the knots off the sides as you can, but it's not the end of the world if you have a knot sticking out that far so that guide will just go out and around. So definitely like the guides. Adjustability, great. Keeping the bar wrench handy, great. Um, easy to top off the tank, top off the bar oil, make any last minute adjustments here. Um, so other than basically setting the width to fit the bar, well, everything we've adjusted has been with the bar wrench and it's just quick, loosen the coupling nuts and you're good to go. Uh, as far as how many times you have to tighten the mill down, not really. I think our first cut, we had to tighten one coupling nut down here on the handle. And other than that, we really haven't had to tighten anything down. Nothing's come loose. So first impressions, it's awesome. I mean, this is not a revolutionary video. We're trying to share this with folks maybe who aren't familiar with chainsaw milling or haven't done it before. Um, definitely well worth the money uh, over a DIY or something you could build yourself. It's very precise, meaning the cuts are very clean, they're very smooth, there's no gouging, no seesawing, all that stuff. We had all those problems with our old mill, so some of our lumber kind of looks like that if you look at it from the side. It's not good for decking, which you want to be extremely smooth. We were afraid we were going to have to use a planer on our hot tub deck decking because our, our mill was so rough, we were going to have to plane it smooth. I'm pretty sure we can get it dead on with the Granberg. About the ripping chain, love it. Um, it actually cuts 3 16 of an inch more narrow than our cross cut chain. That means every single cut, we're gaining 3 16 of an inch of wood. And across the course of six pieces of wood, we've gained an inch of wood. That's huge, not only just in labor, I mean the amount of time or effort it takes to push the saw through the log, but the amount of wasted sawdust also uh, granted, we're going to turn that into compost, so it's not 100% waste, but we want to make wood, not sawdust. Um, so that Granberg chain's doing great. Um, we'll have to see how long the sharpness lasts, but uh, Alyssa got a chance to run the sawmill, and she was able to push the sawmill just fine. So it's definitely easier, I will say that, and it cuts very differently than the crosscut chain um, that's filed for ripping chain. So. So far, first impressions, great. Love the ripping chain. In fact, I think we'll probably get a couple more of them. That way we can just keep them sharpened and rotate them through so we don't wear this one out. So that's our initial impressions on the Grandberg. If you enjoyed this video and you want to uh, learn more about timber framing, milling your own lumber, winching logs, off-grid living, stuff like that, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll put a subscribe button right here and please follow us over on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. We do more in-depth write-ups on a lot of our topics. We also have a Facebook and an Instagram. We do a lot of micro posts over there, so if you enjoy those, please follow us over there, and we'll see you in the next video.